The change of variables theorem is so very useful. Let's take some time, learn a few things about surface area. Now, I'm sure that you've seen surface area before back in single variable calculus, but I'm also sure that it really only applied to surfaces of revolution where you rotate about some axis. But there are a lot more interesting and complicated two-dimensional surfaces in 3D. Let's say we look at arbitrary parametrized surfaces. These can get kind of crazy, but the infinitesimal surface area element is pretty nice. It's just going to be a parallelogram. Let's think about this more carefully. Let's say that our surface is parametrized by some function g with two inputs, s and t, three outputs, x, y, and z. Now, to get at the surface area element, we look at the derivative of g. That's a matrix with two columns, three rows. Each of those columns is an infinitesimal tangent vector that generates some parallelogram. So what is the area of a parallelogram that is spanned by a pair of vectors in 3D? Oh, we've learned that before. Way back in volume one, we learned about that in terms of the cross product. If you take the length of the cross product of those two vectors, you get the area of that parallelogram. So back to the context of a parametrized surface given by G, if we want to know what the surface area element is, we look at those two tangent vectors, partial G, partial S, partial G, partial T. If we take the length of the cross product of those two vectors, we get the surface area element, and integrating that gives us the surface area. The surface area element, d sigma, is equal to the length of the cross product, partial g, partial s, and partial g, partial t. If we integrate that length over the parameter plane with respect to the area element there, ds dt, then we get the surface area. And the wonderful thing is, thanks to the change of variables theorem, this is independent of how you parametrized the surface.